Okay, I'm back. This is the next uh, test. The, these next few are, are not alignments, but just tests. Now, the previous one where I matched this to the outside frequency, um, once I did that, then you take a reading of the high re frequency range of the PLL oscillator and the low, and you subtract the high from the low, and you have to be within 9.8 and 15 kilohertz of that reading. And I came out with 13.74, so that, that was passed. Now I'm on to the next test, which is the voltage-controlled oscillator test. So using the band selection, I put it into 40 meters, 80 meters rather, and I have it set at uh, 4,000.10, which is what this tells you to do. And then I'm going to read this and do this uh, on camera. Hopefully we have a good view. Is that? Yeah, we're okay. See if we go a little this way. If I mess with this too much, I'm going to knock it over. Okay, so I have that set where this book said to. Connect the frequency counter probe to the test point TP1 and activate this the counter again, as I did before. So I'm on TP1. You won't see any change there. I have to turn on the, calc the probe again. So that's going to be um, changing this. Kale on. There it is. Okay, so that's my readout on this. Um, I'm going to continue reading. You should now see a frequency counter reading between 8 to 10 megahertz, which I do. I have 8913. It may or may not be stable at this time. It's pretty stable. The last digit's moving. Uh, at this time, the frequency may be changing. If the reading is zero or changing rapidly, you don't have a counter cable. Blah, blah, blah. I did that. Okay. If the reading is fairly stable but not between 8 and 10, refer to troubleshooting. Okay. I'm good. I'm 8913.26, and it's, it's going between a 6 and a 7. Test passed. So that one was easy. Check those off. Tap menu to exit calc. I'm back on the frequency. Okay. Moving along. And I don't know how much I'll do of this on camera. It depends on what I run into here. VCO alignment. In the following steps, you can adjust the VCO inductor L30 so that the VCO control voltage is in the proper range. Disconnect the internal frequency counter probe and remove it completely. Select 80 meters and set it for 4,000 kilohertz. Connect a digital multimeter to, multimeter to the left end of resistor R30 and ground. Use a small alligator clip to ensure good con connections. You can also use the built-in one. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It is possible to damage the slugs in the slug tune inductors if you use a metal tool or if, it, or if you tune the slug too far in and out. The tuning tool provided will not damage the slugs. I have that tool. Using the wine, wine end of the plastic tool adjust the slug in L30 for a voltage reading of 6 volts. If the voltmeter does not change at all in its full range of fertile troubleshooting. Okay. We can do that. Okay, we're set up now. So you can see, I just hooked it up. I didn't touch a thing. Um, I'm on the uh, left side of L of no, R30, resistor number 30 on the RF board, and I have 3.37 volts. It's supposed you're supposed to turn L30 until I hit six volts. It says if the voltage changes but cannot get to six, you probably have wound the VCO inductor incorrectly or have installed the wrong value on L30 or C72. It also says if it doesn't change at all through its full range, refer to troubleshooting. So hopefully this is going to change when I turn this inductor. So uh, we are in the inductor. Now, let's see which way our meter goes. Wow, that doesn't turn very easily. Wow. I know it says don't use metal, but holy cow.
That thing is stiff. Like it's bent in the end of this thing. I'm just gonna cheat a little and use this uh, jeweler screwdriver a second. That's really stiff. I hope to God I didn't break it. If I did, I'll have to get another one and unsolder and put it in there. Which would be a royal pain because it's got like five pins. It, while I was turning it, it felt like it moved more than it did prior. Like it let loose of something, you know, as if as in breaking it. This plastic thing sucks for turning this. Horrible. <laughs> Six. Come on, you were there. Nine five. Nine four. All right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to look at that transformer and recheck my windings, recheck the parts that it told me to check, try it again, and if it doesn't work, I'm going to swap that inductor again with one that I haven't used and uh, go from there. Thanks for watching. Well, hello again. How's that for a close-up? Let me fix my mic. So you can see... There's a spot where the inductor was. I pulled it out. I very carefully pulled out the transformer first, which is the yellow toroid next to it. It's actually a transformer. It has a green winding and a red winding. I pulled it out. I verified with the book that I had it wound correctly. I did actually end up moving, rewinding the green winding, not because I had the wrong number of turns. Let me try to get over it. So the green winding is toward the top there. There's four turns. But because I had them spaced slightly wrong, there's uh, there's 16 windings on the red, and you had to have them in between, and they wanted it on one side of it. I had it a little off-center. I don't know if it made a difference, but I moved it over, I think, two windings. So it's, like, more centered up there compared to here. So I have, like... Uh, six spate, one, two, three, four, five spaces over there, one, two, three, four, five, six spaces, then the green is in between each one of them. It can't be even, you know, it couldn't be exactly because it either had to be one side or the other. Um, and I tightened it up a little bit, and then I re-checked uh, the enamel on the tips of all of it, made sure I had continuity on my meter, and I soldered it back in. And, uh, tight, and everything's tight and it's good and it's correct. Then I went to pull this out. I very carefully unsoldered this with uh, solder wick and um, got to the point where I was pulling it out, gently getting each side out, and it ended up bending sideways and the case came off before the rest of it, which broke it. But I, I, think, it, I think it was out of whack anyway, so I was going to ask Ellicraft for a replacement. And I thought I'd show you the inside of it. Uh, um, which is destroyed but what happened is you know the top came off and the base was a plastic base with six pin five you know, yeah five pins in it and whenever you have a thing with multi pins like that if you try to so unsolder all the pins at once and pull it out it's almost impossible so since it was plastic I just took took my nippers and I cut each pin away from the plastic into sections and then pulled each pin out individually. It's the only way to do it effectively so without damaging the board. My main focus was not damaging the circuit board or, and, and the traces. I didn't care about this because I knew this was going to have to be sacrificed. So here's the uh, the thing I was spinning and you can see the threads on it, sort of. Sort of. It's not going to focus, but it's just plastic and it spun inside of here which had plastic threads and then that is hollow okay that's hollow 
and it was over the top of this little miniature coil which of course had little wires going down uh, to the lead to the soldered leads and I'm not sure I, I think this was stationary the little wire thing was stationary it had to have been stationary I believe and this thing was going back and forth over the top of that coil but the interesting thing is I don't this I don't think this is oh no maybe it is it felt like plastic and you can see like a coating on the inside I don't know if you can see that coating not really it's a grayish coating and I was like well is it plastic coated with some type of inductive material or is this whole thing inductive I'm not sure which at any rate, with those plastic threads and the way this thing is and the way the voltage was, something wa it wasn't tuning correctly anyway. So uh, I have another one. I have three more, actually, that go in, in the transmitter part of the radio. I'll put a new one in, and then I'll do this test again, and I will order another one from Elcraft and put it back in that spot. Well, no, I'll put this one in that spot and order one for the later stage of the radio. From Elecraft, so I can continue doing what I'm doing. Anyhow, thanks for watching. 73, this is Tom.